Darling, you send me. I know you send me. Darling, you. Australia has been increasing their humanitarian intake dramatically in recent years, as well as increasing the amount of refugees from Syrian conflict, now taking around 12,000 new refugees annually. As of 2016, Australia now accepts 17,000 refugees from conflicts and natural disasters around the world. stacked highly against them when starting a business. In a 2017 study about refugee and migrant unemployment rates, it was found that 33% of Middle Eastern migrants are unemployed during the first five years of their settlement. Refugees face many barriers while finding a new job in Adelaide. But a universal problem for refugees when starting a new business is the language barrier between English and the home country's language. The government has been helping with tuition, giving 500 hours of free tuition and spending around 20 million dollars to help support new refugees when learning a new language. Many refugees come to Adelaide with little to no education, only knowing the skills that they have learned from their mother and father, unknown to the Australian market or regulations. Overall, refugees have a higher self-employment rate per capita. This is most likely due to previous businesses owned in their original country. In fact, 30% of Afghanistan refugees have had some experience prior to moving to Adelaide. We will now cut to a phone call that we had with Professor Collins, who shared some very crucial information about refugee businesses in Adelaide. Why might refugee-owned businesses be successful or non-successful, and what is it that makes this differ? Well, I think one of the key features of the success of refugee businesses is the determination uh, and the capacity for hard work amongst the refugee entrepreneurs. Most of them, their businesses are embedded in the family. The family will help out or support the business. And a lot of the refugees in Adelaide I talk to, they would be working seven days a week, 12 hours a day. Um, some of them uh, weren't really earning much more than they would earn on Centrelink. Uh, and so you'd think, well, why not just sit back and do nothing and, uh, and take your Centrelink payments? And the answer to that question is that they think that in the future, the more and more uh, hard work and effort they put in to get the business established and off the ground, that eventually uh, it'll, um, you know, sort of start uh, returning better better profits and better income so um, there's a great degree of um, I, I suppose an ability to take risk because risk is a key factor for business and there's nothing more risky than um, uh, risking your life and that of your family uh, going on a boat from Indonesia to Australia uh, so they're determined they're risk takers they're very very determined they're very very hard working uh, and all these factors um, I think uh, suggests that, um, you know, that that's very conducive to, in the long run, a successful business. In a study conducted by the University of Oxford about Congolese, Somali and Rwandan refugees in Uganda, found that 60% of them were self-employed, which shows that communities like the Hazara and self-owned businesses aren't just an abnormality in Adelaide, but is worldwide. More specifically to Adelaide is the Hazara community, which holds a diverse range of refugee entrepreneurs. 17 of the Hazara entrepreneurs started their first business as either a charcoal kebab store or a small grocery store. first one I can tell you is the paperwork. The main one is the paperwork to do those things. It's pretty hard and to get everything organised 
and for those people that have difficulty in, in the language, English, it's pretty hard for them. For me, it's just the paperwork when I, you know, go, I have to go and do the everything legally and all that to the documents and paperwork. That's the hardest challenge of that uh, Well, I came to Australia when I was 14 years old, 14, 15. And uh, when I came, I came. I went to Griffith, New South Wales. I was with my parents. My parent, and my dad had a background of um, auto illustration in, in cars, so he was he had a business overseas. You know, he, he had a workshop. So when I came, when, I, when we came to Adelaide. He started working as an auto electrician, but it was hard for him to work as a worker because he used to have his own business, and that's how he opened one. He opened a clash repair, and because he didn't want me to work for someone else and you know, wanted me to have my own responsibilities, he helped me to buy my own business. So I bought a butcher shop. And when that butcher shop, I had it for one year and a half. It was good. It was in the central market, but because I was studying at the same time, I couldn't handle that pressure. I couldn't handle the pressure too much. So I sold that one, and then I told my dad, "I need something that you can be there as well, support me, because if I'm not there." And it's hard for me to you know, organize a business while I'm studying. So I'm studying as well, I'm studying civil engineering. But at the same time, I've got a wrecking yard. A wrecking yard. A car, car wrecking yard, so for, for parts and all that. But I have my dad support me as well because if I'm at a uni studying, he's there to cover me up. And then. Um, Finally, our documentary comes to a close. Giving exposure to refugee businesses helps give an understanding to the Adelaide community, not only about the hardships these refugees may have to face, but also tells the story of these wonderful people.